Hello, my name is Carrie Jensen, and this is a quick look at live bindings in RAD Studio. This is part two of a five part series. This part is the Expression Engine. Let's go over to RAD Studio. As you learned in part one, expressions consists of literals, operators, properties, and methods. In this example, project I have here, which is based on a project created by Jim Tierney, engineer at Embarcadero. We're going to look at the construction of expressions. Expressions are a critical aspect of live bindings because live bindings use the expression engine to evaluate string expressions in order to create values that are assigned to properties of objects in the output scope. I'm going to run this project without debugging so that we can easily view in the editor the information or how the information is created. Let's first look at this method. Uh, I will describe this method in a little bit of detail. The other methods are very similar to it so I will spend less time when talking about the other methods. What this method does is it begins by creating an empty scope using the t-dictionary scope class. Next, the t-bindings expression class is used to call create expression in which the scope is passed in plus an expression. In this case the expression is the text property of the edit. Note we are not passing the edit as an object in as an expression we are passing the text. So we could just as easily type in some literal text here and we'd also create an expression. Next that is that expression is evaluated to create an i value object the i value object implementation is we call get value on and that returns a t value we then evaluate the t value if it's empty we display the expression is empty if it's an object we display the class name of the object and for all other values we display the two string representation of that value so let's use some literals the string literals can be enclosed in single quotes or single quotes. In this case there are no objects in the scope so we can only use literals and operators. If we want to use built-in methods those also have to be added to the scope and this button adds the built-in methods which are methods that are registered in a design time package with the expression engine. We can use the t-binding methods factory to get a scope that holds all of the registered methods and this is what's happening here when after creating an empty scope we create a nested scope based on that scope adding the scope of the methods that have been registered. We then create our expression and evaluate it. This permits us to do things like this. Here the custom toString method has converted a literal number to a string and concatenated with another string. This example shows how to add an object to scope. In this case it's an unnamed object. We take the edit and call wrap object to create an, a scope with this edit in it. We then also create a nested scope with our methods and then evaluate the expression with the expression being represented by the text in the edit. So remember the edit is in scope so we can say something like self.top plus 20. Top is an integer property we use self in this case to represent the unnamed object. We could also omit the reference and get the uh, get be able to touch the properties of that object as well. We can also use properties or I should say we could also use methods of the object in scope in our expression. We can also name the object 
and it, when we do so, we map the object to a name, which also is a string. When we do that, the self variable is no longer available. When we name an object, we must qualify properties and methods with the name of the object. By the way, when you refer to methods on objects, you must include the parentheses, whether or not that method has parameters. Thank you for joining me today in this quick look at live bindings. For additional information, visit www.embarcadero.com slash rad in action slash live bindings. There you'll find the replay of my webinar, Visualizing Live Data with Live Bindings in Rad Studio. You'll also find a link to my paper, Live Bindings in Rad Studio, as well as links to the other videos in this Quick Look series. For information about the current Delphi Developer Days tour, you can visit DelphiDeveloperDays.com. For information about my latest book, Delphi In-Depth Client Datasets, visit JensenDatasystems.com slash CDSbook. Finally, you can contact me at cjensen at jensendatasystems.com or follow my blog or follow me on Twitter where I tweet about Delphi topics several times a week.